Firstly, I don't believe that Facebook went public today. I think they just got their privacy settings wrong. Uh, I want to change the, the topic of discussion from what Zuckerberg does with your picture or your liking of, of rugby or whatever it is. Um, and I'm going to do that by asking a couple of questions. First of all, is anybody here, this may not be the greatest audience to ask, anybody here uh, dating and or in love? So if you're dating and or in love, we just put your hand up, right? Okay, so that's nobody single, nobody like three years married, okay? So, so keep your hands up if you would. And uh, keep your hands up and drop them if, you're, uh, if you don't have the phone that you use to text your loved one with you. So if you have the phone, keep it up. And are you willing to relinquish that phone to me now so that I can read those texts out so that we can web broadcast them? Anybody willing to do that? Okay, absolutely nobody is willing to give me their phone to let me read their texts. Okay, so by the standard uh, logic, we can presume that I am pretty much surrounded by terrorists. Uh, that's basically the logic is that if you're not willing to let me read, I mean, what have you got to hide? This gentleman here, you've got, obviously got things to hide. This gentleman here is handed as well. Clearly you've got stuff to hide, and if you want to hide it, then I want to read it even more. I don't care about these other people. Now I just really want your phones, right? So this is the logic that leads inevitably to installing video cameras in your front room, right? For the, for the government to say, well, if you've got nothing to hide, why can't we have a, a video camera in your front room? Now, it, it, as that seems conspiracy theorist, consider that almost every other location is now covered. And so, so we are at the point where, you know, your house is your castle. Um, so, I just want to return to my notes. Uh, given that I'm surrounded by terrorists, as, as we've established, um, I have in, 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 in the vernacular uh, come packing. Right, so, This, which those of you under 30 may not recognize, <laughs> is an envelope. And it is the analog equivalent of what is in digital form considered munitions. So, for though, for though, way back in like the 80s, we used to write stuff and put them into these and then glue them shut. And then alarmingly, we put them in with lots of other ones where it was impossible to trace back the originator of these. And then an entire system would deliver this to people, sometimes known proven criminals. Right? And it would get there, and we had an expectation that they would arrive unmolested, right? that nobody would open them. In fact, we used to sign our, our, our names across them too, right? so that, which was kind of the equivalent of a PGP key, that if, if it had been steamed open and closed again, it wouldn't fit. So you'd know that it has been interfered with en route. Right? And we had such a strong expectation that these would be uninterfered with that if we did find their interfering, we'd write other notes and stick them into these things right? and send them to newspapers. Wooden iPads, right? Just in, <laughs> just in case you don't remember them. So we had an expectation that, that this would be uninterfered with. And now somehow we've lost that, uh, that expectation. We're now having this discussion. So, Let's leave that for a moment and think about an idea, a, a, a concept that has been so maligned and so um, forgotten almost that it's going to seem somehow strange and perhaps even preposterous. You are all born free. We are all born free. Free to do as we see fit. Free to kill, free to steal, free to rape. As any teenager will tell you, I didn't ask you a born man. But pretty soon after you learn, don't put that in your mouth, you learn there are rules. There are agreements that we've made because we've chosen to make those agreements. That society itself has had a bit of a conversation with itself and said, this will all work a lot better if we all agree not to kill, not to steal, not to rape. And in return, I get not being killed, not being raped, not being stolen from. These agreements are so old that societies right across the, the, the world, have pretty much taken them as a standard, codified them, written them down, and we call them law. But they are, in effect, agreements. They're still just not rights, but they are the, the, the opposite, they're almost the inverse. They are relinquishing freedoms. So you say, well, I agree to relinquish my freedom to kill, my freedom to steal, my freedom to rape. 
in order that I would get something in return, and that is safety of, of my, my body and safety of my possessions. So, then along comes the internet with its disruptive technologies, and it does what it does best. And we're not having the conversation that says, well, what freedoms do I want to give up, and what securities am I getting back in return? So we've given up, for example, we kind of consider it okay for people to intercept our emails and to look at them and, and, and to, to, to review what we're saying. And we've kind of considered it okay that they'll decide who it is we're allowed to communicate with back and forth and what we're allowed to communicate with them about. Well, nobody ever had this uh, discussion with me, and they haven't had it with you. We haven't had this as a society. We haven't agreed to relinquish these rights in order to, re to, to get what? What exactly are the securities that we were, were getting back? So I want to leave you with a rather unpleasant um, question. And it's one that we haven't faced as a society, and I'm not suggesting an answer one way or the other. But if we could roll back time to 2000 and say, well, I will relinquish certain rights and freedoms in order that we can stop the two towers being destroyed. Well, what are those rights, oh, sorry, those freedoms that you will relinquish how far are you willing to go? Would you agree to all communication being, being intercepted? Some communication, no communication? Video cameras up to your doorway, into your house, in your bedroom? How far are you willing to f subvert your own freedoms in order for the society to operate in a safe fashion? And that's a question we haven't addressed. And it's being enforced on us from the outside. And that's always going to cause tension. So, while we're talking about privacy, I'd like you to think about those sorts of things as opposed to <laughs> some odious little toad has shared my Instagram picture. Now, well, if you don't want your private information being shared worldwide, don't put it on the World Wide Web. That's just, you know, just maybe you should think about that. But there is a much deeper question that we need to think about, which is how far are we willing to go to allow companies, corporates, uh, governments, and each other to invade into our privacy in order to secure society for ourselves.